When you shop around for a new 50mm lens with an f1.8 aperture, you will quickly notice a few third-party, more budget-friendly options available. And some of these brands actually make compelling 50mm lenses with f1.8 apertures. Thank you for coming to this marketing meeting. We have finally figured out how to slot in perfectly into the lens industry. Our photographer has just moved on from their first kit lens, and they're looking for that next prime lens. And we want to make sure we deliver something that feels premium, while sacrificing on quality and increasing our profits. So what's going on here? For context, I've owned three different 50mm lenses from Sony, and I've actually bought and sold all three of them. The Sony 50mm f1.8 is a fantastic lens. Alongside the classic Canon Nifty 50 f1.8, I think it's one of my easiest to recommend lenses. I have here two third-party 50mm lens with similar f1.8 apertures, one from Seven Artisans and one from Yongnuo. Quick disclaimer, this 7 out of sans lens was sent to me as a review unit, and because of that, there may be some problems with this specific unit that are addressed in the full production model once it's released, so please bear that in mind with some of the issues we touch on in this video. And I do not have the Viltrox 50mm f1.8, however I do have a Viltrox lens which is a 13mm for Fuji X mount, just so I can show you build quality similarities. Just quickly looking at the Viltrox design, this does feature the aperture ring, but actually has clicks between each of these. In terms of actual design, mostly metal construction with a bit of plastic in there as well. Then on the rear lens mount, it features a USB-C port for installing firmware updates. Similar to the Viltrox, the 7 Artisans also features an aperture ring. However, they decided to make this clickless so that you never have to worry what actual f-stop you're at and you can slip and change the aperture without meaning to very easily. And also similar to the Viltrox, on the lens mount this features a USB-C port. Moving on to the Yongnuo 50mm f1.8, this feels like the more balanced approach of these lenses. Similarly, it features a mostly metal construction, but it does have some plastic parts on here as well. However, one main difference you'll see between this lens and the 7 Artisans is that it is missing the aperture ring, but gains two function buttons, which surprisingly both of these function buttons get mapped to the same custom function in your Sony menu. And something missing on this lens compared to Viltrox and 7 Artisans is there is no USB-C port to be able to install firmware, which means Yongnuo must be quite satisfied with how this lens came together, and we'll get into that later. After many hours of research finishing at 4am this morning, we have determined that our photographer wants one thing in their lenses among all else, and that is a Fuji lens over a Sony lens. We are not 100% certain on why this is the case, but all we can think of is aperture rings. So we found some of these on AliExpress, and we're going to start slapping these babies on every single lens that comes off our production line. After last week's meeting, I don't want to hear about in-lens stabilisation again. We have determined that it's more than likely most of our photographers are going to be shooting with cameras that have at least three axes of image stabilisation built into the camera. Or at least, that's what people on YouTube seem to say. Reviewing images from both lenses wide open, I think they both perform very well with flat, even light, which is all we get in Manchester at the moment. Sharpness looks good on both lenses at 1.8, and when we stop down to f2.8 and further, these concerns kind of drift off completely. My main concerns are to do with the speed and performance of the autofocus, and also lens flaring, which we'll get into more later. Looking at images both out of camera and with presets applied, it's a difficult call in terms of which lens is performing the best. Subjects both look good with nice color reproduction and contrast, and both of the edges seem similar on each lens. You can see here when testing autofocus in photo mode that one of the lenses is performing very quick and very responsive with full sensor coverage compared to the other lens. But this AF issue does not affect the quality of the images produced, only the shooting experience. We've discovered images via our lenses look even better when paired with Lightroom presets and video LUTs that we purchased through the Megapixels lifetime access area. Every single month, we get brand new Lightroom presets and video LUTs, and there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you don't like what you get when you purchase, you can get your money back within 30 days. If anyone in the team wants to get your hands on this, I'll drop a link in the description below this video and the pinned comment so you can get these for yourselves. Looking at both of these lenses in an actual usability scenario, I want to show you a problem I found straight out of the box with the 7 Artisans, and that is the noise 
that is produced from the autofocus. This noise can be heard as soon as you turn on the camera and the autofocus motors are engaged, and then also every time you go to focus. While not being as loud as the Sony FE 50mm f1.8 that I mentioned earlier in this video, it is still significantly louder than the Yongnuo. Which is incredibly quiet. Like, genuinely, hats off. Fantastically silent. Looking at the AF speed out in the real world, we can see the Yongnuo performs really well from its close focus distance right to the background. It also performs well across the frame, which is usually the weak spot for third party autofocus lenses. Typically, they perform well in the center, and then as soon as you get out of the center, they start to hunt and get lost. But with the Yongnuo, I can go right to the top, right to the far left, the far right, the bottom, and the corners, and maintain tracking perfectly. And to me, that is very impressive from a third party lens. The 7 Artisans, on the other hand, really suffers in photography mode specifically. The AF performs okay in the center of the frame and towards the top and bottom. However, once we get past like the left third and the right third, if we had a grid on, it seems to lose focus much easier. Not always. In video mode, it performs well, we'll get into that. But in photography mode, this seems to happen when tracking a subject and also when setting a manual focus point to the left or right of the frame. When comparing the two, the Yongnuo is overwhelmingly successful compared to the 7 Artisans when it comes to sensor coverage in AF, but also being snappy, responsive, and quieter in actual real world use. Until recently, we were a purely manual focus lens brand, but this is changing. We have raided an old Canon factory and found lots of their leftover STM autofocus motors. So we're gonna be squeezing those in alongside our aperture rings to create fantastic, hopefully reliable autofocus. And not only this, we're going to be combining our photography philosophy with the philosophy of yoga. Both these lenses, they breathe like a lot. Well, one of them more so than the other. I first noticed this when using the Yongnuo 50mm lens. From close focus to further away, as you might have already noticed on some of our monitor screen records, this thing breathes like crazy. But it does so reliably, quickly, and accurately. Compared to the 7 Artisans, which seems to have less focus breathing, not zero, but significantly less compared to the Yongnuo, this has significantly less focus breathing, however, the autofocus performance is kind of struggling a little bit here. It's quite frustrating that AF performs great in general, but focus breathing better. It would be nice if one of these lenses could do all of these things perfectly. I wanted to test some video on both of these lenses in terms of their continuous autofocus, because the 7 out of sound seemed to perform so poorly in photo mode, I thought it couldn't just be for photography mode. The Yongnuo in these examples, which I did not record the screen, but the Yongnuo performed almost perfectly. There was a couple of points where it seemed to get a bit stuck before starting to focus, but in general, it locked on and hung on to focus perfectly. And it looks even nicer when using this Portra 400 LUT, which can be found in the Megapixels lifetime access downloads. The 7 Artisans, on the other hand, sadly does get lost even in the center, even in the edges when filming video, but not every single time. This was what confused me. I was recording for quite a long time at this point, and at some points it would hang on to a subject from the far left of the frame all the way to the far right. But then if I went back into photography mode, it would struggle to do this exact thing. So it seems that in video, the 7 r Sans has very little focus breathing and the autofocus is less of a problem. This could be fixed with a firmware update. So we don't know for sure this is exactly the performance you're going to get on a 7 out of sans lens in a few months from now. When testing lens flaring, I couldn't get enough of a strong light source when testing either lens in the street. However, I ran a couple of basic tests here just to see what I could find. And it appears that when compared to one of my Tamron lenses, that the Yongnuo lens performs at a similar level. Maybe a small amount more flaring from hard light in the edges of the frame, which could be an issue if you're shooting towards harsh sunlight. However, with soft light, it seemed to perform pretty well and nothing out of the ordinary compared to some other lenses. However, the 7 Artisans performed poorly in my opinion. 
Even from a soft LED light source, it seemed to pick up some flare on the opposite side of the frame, producing much stronger flaring in the edges of the frame from a hard light source as well. Obviously, when in direct sunlight, these effects would be much more visible, so that is another thing to be wary of. But I wouldn't say this is uniquely Seven Artisans issue, as many other third-party lens manufacturers suffer from these exact problems as well. The Seven Artisans lens is currently technically not out, so I can't find a perfect on-release price. If it comes out before the time I publish this video, I will have put it somewhere in the, on the screen. If it hasn't, I will update this in the pinned comment below this video. Ignoring this, considering other 50mm f1.8 lenses from Viltrox, Yongnuo, Seven Artisans, and the original Sony 50mm 1.8, here are the current prices in UK pounds. The Sony 50mm from Sony and pretty much most places you're going to buy it, it's going to be around £151. Seven Out of Sands, as I mentioned, may not be out. The Young Nuo is £281 on Amazon, and just a little bit more than that in dollars, $300 on their actual Young Nuo website. And the Viltrox 50mm 1.8 goes for £355 on Amazon. And while I do not have the Viltrox 50mm f1.8 here, I do have the Viltrox 13mm for XF mount right here. And I have also tested their 28mm for Sony FE mount. And if you want my honest opinion on these lenses, it's a flare city. Where, you know, it's the 70s, we're all rocking flares, just... Flare here, flare there, flare everywhere. We have been instructed to follow up our amazing 50mm lenses with a brand new pancake lens. Something small enough to fit in your mouth. And we're going to be using this video here as market research. So everyone, get watching. 